Hello, my name is Jim German, and welcome to today's episode of... Toolmanjaro! Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at the evolution of a tool. Over here we have Bosch's original 12 volt impact driver. This is called the PS40 and it came out in around 2005. About five years later they came out with this, the Bosch PS41. It's also a 12 volt impact driver and it replaced the original tool over here. So we're going to take a look at what, they, what changes they made over the years. Um, if they made changes mostly to cut costs for them to increase their profits, both these tools sold for about the same price, or if they made changes to make it a better tool for the user, um, or if most likely they did a combination of the both of those. So let's first start looking at the, the overall differences of the tool. Obviously the first thing that jumps out is the size difference. So they're about the same height, however the newer tool is about an inch and a half shorter than the older tool. Now this is great because that means you can get this into more closer spaces um, and the, the bit is closer to where your fingers are. On this tool, if I've got a, a bit in here, the screw on the end of it, I have very long hands. I can actually just barely keep the screw on the end of the bit. This one, very easy to, for me to use my finger to keep the screw on the end of it. But mostly lets you get into tight, close spaces. Now the next thing that jumps out at me, this one doesn't tell you how much battery is left in it. This one in the front here has a nice battery gauge there, three LEDs, tell you how much power is left in the battery. So this one you can kind of hear when the battery gets weak, um, that you know maybe it was time to change the battery. This one not only can hear it, but you can also see it. So if you're going up on a ladder or something, you can take a look, see how much power is left. It's a great thing to have on there. A lot of tools have it, but it was something that was lacking on this tool. So the next thing that you'll see is that the design of the nose changed. This had a fairly narrow nose. This one has a much wider nose. The overall diameter of the two tools is about the same. It just tapers down uh, more on the original one. So the benefit of this is that these LEDs were closer to the ring here. On this one, they're farther away. And unfortunately, on this one, they're not angled at any angle to try to point towards the tip of the screw. And because of that, the LEDs kind of miss where your screw is. They all are about you know half a centimeter uh, away from the center of the screw. It's not the biggest deal, they do shine enough on there so you can see what you're doing, but this one the light was better on. The batteries the two tools came with um, are still compatible, they've changed slightly. These ones have a slightly different plastic case, they look a little bit different. Sometimes these were advertised as 10.8 volt batteries, these were always advertised as 12 volt batteries. They're exactly the same, it's just a, a difference of what you're, it, compared to your nominal voltage of a lithium ion cell versus the maximum voltage. The maximum voltage is 12 volts, so you can actually go a little bit over that. 10.8 is kind of a nominal voltage. Um, besides that, there is a couple little differences here. This one has a little tab on this side. This one has a little tab on that side. I'm not sure if that means that some of them work in some tools and not in others. Um, they both work in these drills interchangeably. So it may be something to do with Bosch's green line that's sold in Europe. The, the newer cells do, do seem to have significantly more power than the old ones do. But I'm not sure if that's just because I've been using these for 10 or 15 years and uh, you know they don't hold as much power as they used to. On the tools themselves, the external construction of them is very similar. Um, this one, the blue, looks a little bit more bluish. This may, looks a little bit more gray. Once again, I'm not sure if that's uh, just an age thing or it was the original color. They're both uh, PA6 nylon, glass fiber 30 reinforced, so same material. And they both have this rubber overmolding in kind of the where you would grip it places as well as places where you might might drop it frequently to help protect the tool um, and some of it that's just decorative as well now they both have vents cut into them so this one has some vents over here and a vent back there as well as an exhaust up there the vents on the side on this one I'm not sure do much they're right up against the motor um, I think that's probably just for looks on this one the vents are just on the side there aren't any on the top or the, uh, the back um, but these are right lined up with where the fan on the motor is, so that's where all the air blows through. I think that's mostly just an aesthetic choice. I don't think it has any performance impact. This one, they added a little hook onto the end of it. to uh, You can put a lanyard on if you want to you know, drape this off a belt or something. So that's another nice feature that they added. One interesting feature on this thing, uh, this tool is these rubber bumpers on the side. This has some molded rubber on the side too. This one has one, but it has a screw in the center of it. I'm, I don't think that's to hold on this piece of rubber. I think the rubber is glued on. Um, and there's one on each side here. I'm not sure if that's just decorative, but it's a little bit of an odd choice as that, you know, that means you have to install screws on both sides. It means you have to flip the tool over, increases manufacturing cost. Um, and that's something they've eliminated from this one. So it's something that they made cheaper for them to manufacture as they go forward. So next I'm gonna uh, 
use the same battery. I'm going to throw a screw into a 2x4, see if there's any performance differences. I've got a little scrap of 2x4 here and a 3 inch deck screw. Just going to see how long it takes to screw that in. Now, right off the bat though, this one is rated for 1800 RPMs. This one's rated for 2600, so this one should be substantially faster. But what's going to matter is how much, uh, the, what the speed is when it starts doing impacts. So let's see how that goes. I'm going to switch to the same exact battery so that's not a power difference. Same bit. So you can see this one was much, much faster. Now, I will say that I've used this tool a lot, um, and I can smell, I think, the brushes rubbing on this, so it may just be an age issue on this tool, but this one does seem a lot faster. So I'm gonna take these two guys here, I'm gonna open them up and see what the insides look like, see if they made any changes on the insides um, to improve the tool or to cut costs. Do that, just as a bit of an insult, I'm gonna use a Milwaukee impact driver to do it. Now, I'm gonna make another video uh, next week to compare this new one with the Milwaukee one. these two guys open up and one thing that it immediately jumps out at me is the size difference between the motors. So this motor here is pretty long and thin it's a, uh, and this motor here is pretty short but a much larger diameter if you see the two of them together. So now for motors the larger diameter the more torque they put out however smaller motors spin faster um, and since you've got a gearbox at the end of it you can make up the difference in torque of the smaller motor by just changing the gearing in the gearbox. Long, thin motors happen to be more efficient because they lose less of the energy in the ends of the windings. In this motor here, the wires at the end of the windings have to go a much farther distance than a smaller diameter motor. And because of that, this makes the smaller diameter much more efficient. Not a lot more efficient, a little bit more efficient. Um, so it's clear that they did this not to try to gain battery life, something like that, but they tried to squeeze the comp to make the impact driver significantly more compact which is great, lets it fit in more uh, small spaces and is easier to use. But it does come at sacrificing some efficiency. So this impact driver is probably a little bit less efficient than this one here. Now something else that jumps out at me is on the control board here, this has a nice little piece of aluminum that's acting as a heat sink. On this one here, there's no heat sink on the uh, control board. There's only a little bit of extra solder. You probably can't really even see it right in there. Um, then that tries to help dissipate some of the heat. It's using the PCB with some solder on it as it to act as a heat sink. Other than that, there's not a heck of a lot of differences. Obviously, the gearboxes, this one has a much larger diameter gearbox. Um, that's just, you know, based on the choice of the motor size that they use. One other little thing is the LEDs on this one are connected with this little flimsy little uh, ribbon wire here. This one uses a much nicer wire here with a, a better connector on there. It's going to be more durable. Um, probably isn't going to make a heck of a lot of difference because it's all embedded in the plastic everywhere, but if you take it apart, this one's a lot easier to break than this one is. Both switches, I couldn't tell the brand of, um, but they both seem like they're very nice switches. They seem nice on both, both of them there, so there doesn't really seem to be a heck of a lot of difference with those. The wiring in each of them, it seems like a bit of a mess. Um, I guess they're trying to squeeze a lot into a fairly small space, but this one, one interesting thing about it is one of these wires here comes out of the switch, goes up through the mother uh, through the board, and then comes back down through the through the board again and onto the motor. It seems very odd. Uh, I guess they just did that because they couldn't. They needed the extra space for the board and um, needed to be able to run the wire somewhere. Seems like an odd choice. I would have thought that you'd run it some other way. That's got to make assembling this one a whole lot more difficult. So it's something that they eliminated on this newer one. It may just be that the electronics have gotten better. They were able to fit more stuff on the PCB without needing that extra space. One other thing on this motor here, this these have these little spade connectors that slide on the end, uh, easy to take on and off. This other one here, the wires go straight into the motor. It looks like one of those little push clips that 
you just jam the wire in and it holds on the end of it there. Now this will save both on assembly time, you don't have to put these little pieces on here, as well as the build materials, you don't have to pay for these little extra pieces here. So that's something that they clearly did to reduce cost, um, but it's not really a big deal. It, uh, you're never really going to be touching either one of these, so it doesn't really matter. So we've got these two all back together now, and I will say, looking at the insides, looking at the two of them, most of the changes they made are to improve the tool, to make it a better tool for the user which is great to see. There's been a couple few cost-cutting things, um, but most of those are just kind of more sensible and, and kind of correcting what I would say is uh, either poor, poor designs or mistakes on this tool rather than actually um, things that they do to make the tool cheaper or easier to use. I did look into these screws a little bit more. These screws don't hold on these bumpers. They actually uh, connect the plastic directly to the gear housing. So in this one, the only thing that's holding the gear housing on is the clamp of the clamshell, the plastic clamshell around it. But that's how most tools are made. So I think that's pretty much fine. Um, you could say that that is cost cutting just uh, to make it a, a, a cheaper tool. It's not going to last as long, but I think that's kind of stretching it. So in general, it's great to see that they, they recognize some of the deficiencies of this tool and pretty quickly, it was only about five years, which is pretty short uh, tool life for a tool, replaced it with this one, which is a much better tool. It's much faster, much more powerful, and has a shorter barrel length that lets you get into a lot uh, closer spaces. So, Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, I have a full review of this tool uh, I did last week. I'll leave a link up there for it. And in the coming weeks, I'll take a look at some of the other tools and compare this one to the Milwaukee Impact Driver. Thanks for watching. Thank you.